managing physical standby files after structural changes on the primary database. After completing this lesson, you should be able to describe the primary database changes that require manual intervention at a physical standby database. And also, we will discuss primary database changes that do not require manual intervention at a physical standby database. In this lesson, uh, we will go through nine different scenarios and we will see uh, one by one uh, to see how we can manage each scenario. Uh, scenario one is adding a data file or creating a table space. Typically, the best practice, uh, the best practice is to manage uh, physical structure change in the in the primary database. In the standby database, we will, uh, you know, we need to set standby file management equals to auto. So when you create uh, a table space in the primary database, and standby database also create same table space automatically. However, uh, there may be case where you need a manual uh, operation in the physical standby database. For example, uh, you have to uh, create and add additional standby log files. At that time, you have to set standby file management equals to uh, manual. So in the process of maintaining physical standby database, you created new table space. So because of, you know we are you know uh, handling uh, synchronization of a, a logical stand a physical standby database manually by setting standby file management equals to manual, the creation of a table space will not be automated in the standby. So in that case, uh, we can uh, take action uh, to synchronize a physical standby database with the primary database. The actions required on physical standby database is, suppose that you created a table space, and then in the standby database, uh, your, uh, the open mode is real-time uh, real-time query mode, so open read only with apply. And on the physical standby database, what you can do is, since we have to create a uh, table space manually, so you will create empty data file by using this command. Alter database, create uh, data uh, create data file and data file name. And then all the other changes to newly created the data file in the primary database, and that will be automatically uh, replicated to a physical standby database, and that will be applied to the newly created empty data file on the physical standby database. So again, you know, uh, it's not common uh, scenario where you said standby file management equals to manual but you know there are you know scenarios where you have to set that parameter to manual because of a maintenance work and during the maintenance work in the standby database what if you created a new table space so in that case we can take you know, a couple of actions to synchronize physical standby database with primary database that's the first scenario. Okay, so let's take a look at second scenario. Using transportable table spaces with a physical standby database. Uh, unlike creating a new table space in the primary database, when you perform transportable table space to primary database, Standby database doesn't know about that. So you will have to take action when you 
uh, import table space by using transportable table space. And I made a few assumptions here is, suppose that you are, uh, you are performing transportable table space. So you, uh, you were aware of you know, manual user intervention as a part of a transportable table space. So uh, after you export metadata from source database, uh, you copied table space and dump file to the primary database physical path, so A location. And you also copied uh, the, the table space that was uh, exported to standby database. But you didn't uh, you know, uh, place uh, the table space that was transported uh, in the same path. For example, in the Boston database, I copied the table space on the user one slash aura data slash Boston. But I copied the same file to standby database to let standby database understand newly created the file as a part of a transportable table space, but in the different path, user one app London. But you haven't added DB file name convert, okay? Uh, to specify you know, uh, mapping information. So you have a user1, aura data, Boston. And the same file located under user1 uh, app, uh, user1 aura data, London. So, you know, when, the, when you make any changes to primary database in this circumstance, and a redo is transported, a redo will be captured and transported to standby database, and standby database will complain. Wait a minute, where is my file? You know, I have a redo coming from primary database and redo describes changes to table space that was transported. You know, from your point of view, you may think, okay, so redo should be able to apply it to standby database. However, since your uh, table space that was transported in the different path in the physical standby database, uh, redo apply service will complain it. No, 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 it doesn't work. So what we have to do is, in that case, in order to recognize a table space that was uh, transported and then copied in the physical standby database in the different path, you will have to set standby file management equals to manual and you have to rename it so you have to specify new location and then you can actually uh, the import uh, the primary database uh, to recognize you know, uh, the, your table space uh, in the different location so you will have to take in a few actions in the, the physical standby database. So again, uh, I made a couple of assumptions. You prepared for transportable table space. You forgot to set DB file name convert, even though we copied table space that were, uh, that, uh, uh, table space that was copied over, uh, copied from source database in the but different path. So in this case, you have to do a couple of actions like this. Okay, so now let's move on to case three, scenario three. Uh, scenario three is renaming a data file in the primary database, meaning that uh, migrating a data file from one mount point another, to another mount point. So if you make any uh, storage migration in the primary database, then how do you handle in you know, a standby database? And that's in you know, uh, the scenario three. Uh, suppose that on the primary database, you issued alter database move data file five uh, to new location. Uh, on the standby database, you know, standby file management database initialization parameter, it must be set to manual. And then we have to uh, they stop redo apply service and then we're going to open standby database in the read only mode 
and start uh, re, uh, re, uh, redo apply service with the Oracle Active, uh, Active, uh, Active Data Guard uh, license. And then we're going to move a data file in the standby database. So alter database, move a data file to new location. So with the Active Data Guard, when you actually uh, migrate data file from one location to another location in the primary database, and you can also move data file from existing location to new location, but it can be also online if you have an Active Data Guard license. Now in order to move it, you had to set standby file management equals to manual, and then you can move it. After you move it, and you're going to shut down standby database, and start up database mount and restart uh, redo apply service. And then we're going to reset standby file management equals to auto. So again, when you migrate data file from one storage to another storage in the primary, in order to move corresponding file in the standby database to another location as well, you have to set, you have to set standby file management equals to manual. And after migrate to new location, then you're going to set it to auto. So that is actually uh, this scenario. And also, let's take a look at scenario 4. Scenario 4 is adding or dropping a redo file group. Uh, adding or removing redo file group it's always a manual task, regardless of uh, uh, standby file management. Standby file management, it only manages data files, but not for the redo log files. So when you add additional uh, log files to primary database, how do you synchronize in the standby database? So the action that is required in the physical standby database is you will have to stop redo apply service and then you will have to set standby file management equals to manual because it's a manual process and then you're going to add or drop log file group in the primary database and then uh, you're going to add or drop log file group in the standby database so since you are, uh, since you're gonna set standby file management equals to manual, so we can make you know uh, physical changes in the standby database, and then we're gonna restore standby file management equals to auto, and then we're gonna restart redo apply service. Okay, so let's take a look at next scenario, scenario five: no logging or unrecoverable operations. Assuming that you forgot to enable force logging and then you perform the no logging operations and right after you realize that you haven't enabled the force logging and you enabled force logging. So what that means is uh, you know, since we made a DML changes right before enabling uh, force logging you know, we missed the that amount of you know, no logging changes. So in that case, you know, we're gonna receive in a series of you know uh, errors uh, in the alert log files. Now, how would you handle this? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually uh, select file name and unrecoverable change in number, which is a no logging operation, and then you will check file name and unrecoverable change number. So we have a table space in the primary database and table space data file in the standby database. Now when you compare unrecoverable uh, change number, you know we have a primary database uh, the value is a higher value, meaning that um, we have a more changes made with a no logging operation. And standby database has a, a less number of a changes uh, you know, performed with a no logging operation. So meaning that before you enable the force logging, we made a more no logging operations. 
So in this case, we have to copy tbs underscore one dot tbf file from primary database to standby database. So what we have to do is, uh, you will have to uh, back up uh, the file you need to copy to standby database first. And then you have to copy primary uh, database data file to standby database because the primary database file include more unrecoverable, uh, unrecoverable changes. And then we're going to restart, uh, redo, apply service. Actually, in, uh, uh, in step number one, right, in step number one, your MRP process will detect uh, the error, uh, uh, detect problem. So, you know, ORA error messages will be generated and eventually, you know, uh, the redo apply service will be stopped. So after we copy the physical file to standby database, and then we can restart in a redo apply service. And if you receive a series of errors due to archive gaps, then we manually resolve the gaps and then we're going to repeat step number four again. Okay, so now let's take a look at scenario six. Uh, scenario six is about transparent data encryption. Uh, transparent data encryption is the way to encrypt business sensitive data. Uh, a couple of terminology stuff. TDE uses master encryption key and master encryption key uh, it is to use to encrypt encryption key. So master encryption key it is used to encrypt encryption key and encryption key is encrypted and encrypted encryption key is saved uh, in the uh, uh, in the data dictionary or a data file header depending on which level you enable the transparent data encryption so if you have you know, uh, the the, the resetting of a TDE master encryption key in the primary database and how you handle. Uh, I will give you the one short uh, whiteboard you know, uh, example to give you a little bit of a background. So that way uh, you, will, you, will, you will have a better idea about this scenario. Okay, so let's take a look at whiteboard node. Suppose that we have a business sensitive uh, uh, data in a table. So that's my table. Uh, in this table, I have a business sensitive column. So I want to uh, I want to use transparent uh, data encryption feature. So I want to encrypt a column here. So this is my column three, for example. So when you create table or when you alter table, you can uh, set uh, encrypt option for this column. Now when you encrypt this column, Oracle uses encryption key. And also, this encryption key is saved in the data dictionary. It's a tab if this is a table level encryption, and the data dictionary is stored in the system table space. Suppose that you know we are saving this encryption key in the data dictionary as is. If a someone who uh, someone who has a, in a higher you know OS level permission, uh, then this you know, a user probably can um, use various tools to extract the content of a system table space, and probably rehash and also decre uh, the, and also extract e encryption key. If someone can actually extract encryption key, even though you know, uh, you know, hacker or you know, highly uh, privileged user can use various tools, 
if that in the worst case, if uh, some uh, somehow if uh, in encryption key uh, the uh, the uh, extracted, then you know this column that was uh, this uh, uh, encrypted, it can be easily decrypted. That's why for security region in Oracle environment, we're never gonna store encryption key as is. Instead of that, we use key store. And key store is a, a location where master key is stored. And one type of a key store is wallet. Wallet is one type. So in this location, we're gonna generate master encryption key. The purpose of a master encryption key is we use a master encryption key to encrypt encryption key. So encrypted encryption key, this will be stored in the data dictionary in this example. So even though you know OS user who has enough permission may be able to extract encryption key, but it is encrypted. So, you know, it's not possible to see actual encryption key. So you have to know what is a key store, what is a master key, and what is encryption key. Now, you know, the scenario, you know, in the scenario six is about this master encryption key. If you have you know, a resetting of this master encryption key, how do you handle in the physical standby database. So let's go back to slide. Okay, so I'm in the slide now. So if you have any changes to master key and resetting of a master key in the primary database by issuing administer key management alter key store password make sure you copy you have you have to make fresh copy from the primary database and then uh, move it over to standby database so that way we can use you know uh, change the master key so that's one uh, one thing what you have to know so let's take a look at the next scenario the next scenario is uh, password file change Suppose that uh, you've set in you know, a remote login password file equals to exclusive. And then you modified password file content by granting administrative privileges to user. If your environment is prior to 12.2, you must copy this password file to standby database manually. However, starting from 12.2, if you make any changes to password file, that will be captured in the redo, and then standby password file will be recovered automatically. So you no longer uh, copy password file to physical standby database manually. However, there is an exception, even in 12.2, even in 19C. Exception is, uh, in your data guard uh, environment, if there is a far sync instance, which we're gonna discuss later on, you have to copy password file to far sync location, because a far sync instance doesn't have a read or apply service. There is no way to recover your password file. So you have to copy password manually. So that is you know, uh, uh, one scenario what we have to know. Uh, as a part of a practice activity, I added this area. So you will see automatic password file propagation feature as a part of a practice activity. Okay, so let's take a look at Scenario 8. Scenario 8 is a controlling PDB replication. Uh, it is to show uh, the 
the better in, uh, the integration of uh, multi-tenant architecture with the data guard. Suppose that uh, you have a primary database with uh, three PDBs, multi-tenant architecture. In the standby database, you will have uh, three PDBs in ACDB. Now, you are planning to create new PDB in the primary database. Depending on your requirement, you may want to protect newly created PDB in the physical standby database. Or you may not want to uh, protect newly created uh, PDB database in the physical standby database. If you want to control PDB relocation or PDB replication, you can set enable PDB on standby parameter. This parameter only valid on the physical standby database. It is ignored by primary database. So when you actually set enabled PDBs on standby, PDB1, PDB2, then only these two PDBs will be protected by uh, pr protected in the physical standby database. Okay. Uh, if a parameter is not specified, all PDBs in the CDB are created on the standby database unless the standby clause is used. When you create pluggable database, you can specify where to create pluggable database. In RAG embodiment, the value must be used on all instances. So we can use this parameter to control you know, uh, the replication of PDB in the data guard environment. And also we can use a you know, uh, different inner you know, pattern. So this parameter accept asterisk, meaning that all PDBs are created on the standby database if primary database has nine PDBs. PDB1 asterisk means uh, it, uh, it will protect PDB1 and ABC. So it accepts PDB with a name pattern, so which is a PDB1. And also we can use a PDB asterisk and A. So if your name uh, pattern matches, and that will be uh, protected by physical standby database. And minus means exclude. So if a PDB, if there is a PDB and each pattern is the same as a PDB, something A, and that will be excluded. So you can use the asterisk, minus means exclude, and also use the uh, asterisk in between name, uh, uh, the, uh, within the name. So based on that, you can specify what should be protected in the standby database what should be excluded in the standby database. That's what you can control. And also we have a, a scenario 9, instantiating a PDB on a standby database. Uh, when you create new PDB in the primary database, so you create new PDB locally uh, newly created the PDB automatically created in the physical standby database. However, what if you create new PDB by using remote cloning? So you have a source database called EM13C and you are cloning PDB database. Now in that case, your standby database doesn't know about that. It's more like a transportable table space. So we have to create uh, the cloned data PDB files to standby database manually. However, in 19C and 18C, we have a, a way to automate creation of a PDB in the physical standby database. And also, you can use uh, unplug and plug in PDB feature to provision PDB in the primary database. 
In that case, newly plugged in PDB must be copied over to physical standby database. But there is a way to automate creation of this uh, the PDB in the standby database. So starting from 18C, we can use the standby PDB source file directory parameter and also standby PDB source file DB link by using these two uh, parameters we can automate creation of a PDB in the physical standby database in these two circumstances. The time when we plug in, unplug the PDB. The time when we uh, clone PDB using remote cloning strategy. So we have in options. Uh, to show you a demonstration of uh, uh, this uh, instantiating PDB on standby, which is a scenario 9, uh, the, I created the practice activity, so we can go through practice activity to understand this better. Okay, so let's take a look at a uh, quiz. If a remote login password file database init parameter is set to shared or exclusive, the password file on the physical standby database must be replaced with a fresh copy from primary database after granting or revoking administrative privileges or changing the password of a user with administrative privileges? The answer is no. In the current version 19C database, uh, any changes to password file, this will be captured and saved in the redo. So password file in the physical standby database recovered automatically. So the answer is false. And the other one is, the database role of a multi-tenant database is defined at the CDB level only, so all the PDBs in the primary CDB must be created on the physical standby database. Not we can control PDB replication. So I created a, this practice activity, you will see demonstration on this topic as well. Uh, I'm going to move on to my demo environment. I will show you a couple of demos. Okay, so I'm in the primary database in my demo environment. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, in the primary database, I have a DEP1 pluggable database. In the multi tenant environment, you can easily switch pluggable database by using alter session set container command. So I will switch to dev one embodiment. And when you look at uh, data file location, so I have a uh, you know uh, data files in this location like this. I want to create new table space and let's see this table space creation is automatically you know, uh, applied in the physical standby database or not. So I'm going to create table space and table space name is a sample 01 and data file user1 app oracle or data Boston dep one uh, sample okay so I will use it lowercase create table space sample 01 and data file user1 app Oracle or data Boston that one sample zero one dot dbf and size is 15 megabytes so I'm creating small table space here so let's take a look at a physical standby database so I will log in as a sysdba 
and also uh, let's take a look at containers so I have a dev1 pluggable database so I'm going to switch to dev1 location alter session set container equals to dev1 and also show actually select name from v dollar data file as you can see sample 01.pdf file automatically created now let's take a look at show parameter uh, standby file so standby file management is auto so this allows us to create a newly created file automatically that's what we can see but what if you drop it from the, uh, from the primary database you will drop table space sample 01 including data file and content content data files uh, drop tape space including I think I I just you know, uh, switch it content and data files drop table space sample 01 including content content and data files so now it works so I made a mistake here okay so what about in the physical standby database so in the physical standby database select name from v dollar data file as you can see it's gone so it worked now I'm gonna show you uh, practice activities I will briefly introduce what you're gonna practice okay so I located the practice activity um, I recorded in you know, this practice session so you can review my practice uh, explanation and demonstration but I will briefly introduce what it is uh, through the one of the scenarios we discussed about you know changes made uh, uh, changes to password file and how to synchronize uh, password file in the standby database in practice 4-1 I wanted to demonstrate uh, this scenario so you know you will make uh, changes in the primary uh, in the primary database and then you will uh, observe you know automatic password file change propagation in the standby database so that's what you're gonna practice here and also I created another practice activity to demonstrate uh, one of the scenarios in this lesson controlling PDV replication uh, I made a few uh, cases here so I created a dev2 pluggable database in the primary database and then uh, I showed how to uh, protect newly created uh, pluggable database in the physical standby database and also I created another a pluggable database which is called the dev3 and also I wanted to uh, you know bypass you know protecting of a PDB uh, uh, development 3 database in the physical standby database if you recall all you know controlling PDB replication is possible by using one parameter in the physical standby database so in this practice activity you will see that kind of a demonstration the last one is in scenario 9 I explained automatic instantiation of a PDB and I developed the practice activity to show you this demonstration so uh, what we what you're gonna do you will perform remote cloning 
by using database link. So in ORCL database, in one of the servers, has a PDB1. So we're going to clone PDB1 to create new PDB in the primary database. And then in this practice, you will see how we can uh, automate instantiation of a PDB in the physical standby database. And when you perform remote cloning, uh, the, the, the creating a newly created, a newly created PDB in the primary database that must be copied to standby database manually. However, in this practice activity, you will see that you can automate creation of a PDB in the physical standby database by using standby PDB source file DB link. So that's in a, this is to show a demonstration of uh, the scenario 9. So you're going to see all these kind of a practice activities. I showed you just in a very, very simple you know, uh, scenario how to automate creation of single file in the primary database to standby. So standby file management equals to auto. It will take care of uh, you know, uh, file creation, deleting uh, existing file. However, there are other cases where we have to perform manual tasks or we can bypass manual tasks by setting parameter or by enabling certain features. So in this practice activity, uh, in this lesson, you will see three different topics through three practice activities. Practice 4-1, refreshing the password file. In this practice activity, you will test the automatic password change propagation feature. Prior to 12.2, when you make any changes to password file in the primary database, you had to copy the password file to standby database manually. However, starting with 12.2, when you make any changes to password file, and there is a recorded in the redo, and redo is applied at the standby database to synchronize password file in the standby database. So that is automatic password change propagation feature. So let's start with uh, uh, the first step. If you have a terminal open on host 01, you're going to start from host 01. If you already closed the window, you have to open it and SSH to host 01. So, uh, since I'm I already in the uh, host 01, I will set environment variable with a Boston rock seed. And I will log in as a sysdba. The next thing what we're going to do, we're going to check uh, the content of a password file. To simplify this practice activity, I will only display users with the sysdba privilege and sysdataguard privilege. Currently, sysuser is the only entry in the password file. So let's check what about password file content in host 03. So I already uh, in the host 03, so I don't have to SSH to host 03. And I will also check environment variables. So Oracle seed, it has been set to London already. So I don't need to change any other environment variables here. Uh, I will log in as sysdba. And I'm in the physical standby database, which is called the London. And we're going to check the content of a password file by using $PW file users. And you should see only one entry, just like a primary database. Okay, here we go. Only one entry. So primary database 
password file content is the same as the password file content in the standby database. That's expected. So let's make one uh, scenario just to um, demonstrate the feature of automatic password file change propagation feature. So what I'm going to do in the standby database, I will stop redo apply service, meaning that even though redo can be transported to standby, but redo cannot be applied. So with the, with the minute, when you uh, change the password file uh, by altering user or by changing password, um, by changing you, uh, the admin user's password, you know, that can be captured through the redo and transport it to standby database. However, standby database cannot be synchronized because we stopped redo apply service. And that's what we're going to test here. So from the whole set of one, we're going to create one admin user. If you are familiar with the multi-tenant architecture, and you can create common user in the CDB root, and you can think about common user as an administrative user. So in my case, I will create DBA user account. But this user account must be available across containers. So I will use prefix cpound pound that indicate the account is a common user. So I will create user cpound pound DBA identified by, and you can use any other password, but to make it simple, I will use rock underscore for you and container equals to all. So this user is available in the Boston database environment. And then I will grant enough privileges to user. So in this case, we grant sysdba to cpound pound user, which means that this user will be registered in the password file in the primary database. So we're going to confirm that. We're going to, uh, we're going to check this. So select username, sysdba, sysdataguard from v$ pw file users. Here we go. So we have another administrative user, cpoundpoundDBA, and this user has a sysdba privilege. Now what about standby database? If this were a uh, database in 12.1, for example, when you make any changes to password file in the primary database, you know, you have to copy password file manually to standby database. However, our current database is 19C. Starting from 12.2, password file change is automatically propagated. So let's check. I'm going to format the output of a query. Okay, so I have a one entry. It's expected. Why? Because we stopped the MRP. So now we're going to start redo apply service, which is called the media uh, recovery process. So if a command, uh, command is processed, at the OS level, you will see MRP process running. And this will read redo and apply changes that include the password file change as well and so let's double check okay so i only have one entry uh, password file change sometimes in, uh, it doesn't transport it doesn't apply changes immediately so uh, best way to see the output immediately is you go back to host shadow one and grant privilege it one more time. I think in, in our testing embodiment, our uh, lab embodiment is a virtual embodiment, so there is a small delay. So once you execute in a grant command one more time, then finally it's registered. 
you know, we didn't have to copy password file from primary database to standby database. So I also noted here, you know, uh, the grant command. Sometimes it doesn't appear in the output immediately. So if you want to see output immediately, you grant, you execute grant command to see the expected output. So we're going to actually uh, test one more thing. What if you change the password of a CPOUNDPOUND DBA user from primary database? Can I use this pa a new password to connect to physical standby database? If the automatic password file change propagation feature works, then we should be able to connect to London database with a new password. That's what we're going to test. So I'm going to return to host user 1 and I will alter user, alter user C pound pound DBA identified by welcome underscore 1. So I changed it. Now what we're going to do we're going to uh, use a connect string, connect, C, pound, pound, DBA, welcome, underscore one, at London, at the CBA. Here we go, it works. Meaning that new password works, and that was propagated and applied uh, directly in the password file in the physical standby database in our case. So that is simple testing. So now what we're going to do since we completed the testing, so I will just drop user that we created for this testing. C pound pound DBA cascade. And then keep the same in our terminal window because we're going to use it for our next practice activities. Just exit out of SQL plus. And in this practice you learned in a new feature, which is an automatic password file change propagation feature through practice 4-1. This is a practice 4-1. Practice 4-2, controlling PDB replication. In this practice, you will create two new PDB databases which is called DAP2 and DAP3. And these databases are created in the primary database. And you will see how to control PDB replication to the standby database. Think about this. When you create new data file in a table space, or when you create new table space in the primary database, this file can be, uh, autom uh, can be automatically created in the physical standby database by setting standby file management auto. So we can set uh, any parameter to automate creation of a data file in the standby database. But what about when you create new Pluggable database. Pluggable database is nothing more than set of data files. It doesn't include control file. It doesn't include online redo. It doesn't include SP file. Pluggable database include only set of data files. So when you create new pluggable database, the standby database create these files that belong to a newly created PDB? Yes. But what if you don't want that? In practice 4-2, that's what we're going to practice. So let's start with the uh, task 1. In terminal 1, on host 1, you will create directory for DAP2 pluggable database. In my case, I use the existing session, 
so I don't have to set uh, environment variables again. But in your case, if you open the new terminal window, and you will have to execute ORAEMV script. And then I will log in as a sysdba. And I'm in the primary database. So when you type show parameter db unique name, as you can see, I'm in the Boston database. In this database, we have a, a PDB seed, which is template to create new MT pluggable database. And we also have a DEP1 pluggable database. So from DEP1, I will create new pluggable database, which is called the DEP2. So here's you know, uh, the command, create pluggable database DEP2 from DEP1. Um, you can actually copy multiple lines in the SQL prompt, unlike OS prompt. So I can just copy this, and I can paste it. And then I can create DEP2 from DEP1. If you recall, if you have, you know, when you uh, execute multiple lines of a command at the OS level, you have to copy line by line, but not in the SQL plus. So now finally, you will see newly created a pluggable database. That's DEP2. The initial state of uh, uh, the database is mounted. So you will have to open it. So as you can see, um, the DAP2 is open in read-write mode. So I'm going to take a look at host03, and I will log in as a sysdba, assuming that you already configured environment variables with the London. OK. So if you want to double check, show parameter db Unique name is London. So we're going to actually review the value of a one parameter at the standby database. And this is enabled PDBs on standby. Asterisk means all of the PDBs in the primary database will be created in the physical standby database. Any changes to the pluggable databases in the primary database will be transported and applied. So that's the meaning of asterisk. So I'm in the physical standby database. When you look at the list of pluggable databases, the newly created pluggable database already in the physical standby database, which is good. Now, I'm going to modify enabled PDBs on standby parameter only to protect DEP1, DEP2 pluggable databases in the physical standby database. And I will double check. Show parameter enabled PDB on standby. This parameter works on, only in the physical standby database. Now, I'm going to go back to host data one and I will prepare creation of a new pluggable database. And new pluggable database name is a DEP3. From DEP1, I will create DEP3 pluggable database. Initial state of pluggable database is mounted. So once database is created, I will have to open it. So I will type show pdbs. As you can see, it's mounted. So I will have to open it. 
Okay, so I think I, I made a typo here. It's gotta be open depth three, not depth two. But you know, actually, uh, what should uh, what we should do? The command is correct. Now we're gonna actually uh, check newly created PDBs in the standby database on host zero three. Show PDBs. Okay, so wait a minute. I want to synchronize and also protect only depth one and depth two. Depth three is already in the physical standby database. The step mean this parameter didn't work. No, not really. So we will have to take a look at a little more and a little more information. So when you uh, look at V dollar PDBs, it will show you a little more information. So I will format the output and I will execute select statement. As you can see, PDB3 was created. However, this will not be uh, protected, meaning that any changes made to DEP3 will not be applied. Okay, so that's actually uh, the one one thing what we can see here. Um, this can be uh, this can be controlled by setting enabled PDBs on standby parameter, and this parameter only works at the physical standby database. As you can see, you can actually control what PDBs can be protected, which PDBs cannot be protected, and you can control that. Okay, so that actually one practice activity uh, that demonstrate a new feature that was available uh, in 12.2. So in order to clean up this embodiment for future practice activities, I will reset this parameter at the standby database and I will execute one small script to clean up embodiment. So Oops, that's my problem. I will have to execute this script in the primary database because it will drop um, the newly created PDBs. So DEP2, DEP3. To do so, we have to close the DEP2, DEP3, and then finally we drop it. And then you will exit out of SQL Plus to prepare for next practice activity. And this is a practice 4-2. Practice 4-3, automating instantiation of APDB. And this practice will show you how to automate creation of a PDB in a physical standby database. Now think about that. In the data guard environment, there are a few cases where you have to copy data files manually to standby database. One example, when you, trans when you perform transportable table space to primary database, so you have a source database and you perform transportable database from source and you transport table space into primary database. Transportable table space is nothing more than creation of a file. However, unlike in a create table space command or adding data file command, transportable table space will not be handled automatically at the standby database. So, when you perform transportable table space, you have to copy those files to standby database manually. And there is another case. For example, suppose that you want to create new pluggable database in the primary database. The creation of a PDB strategy is cloning method, for example. So you have a, a source database called ORCL and destination database is your primary database, which is Boston. So we want to use remote cloning to create cloned PDB. 
when you create new PDB using remote clone strategy prior to uh, 12.2 and 18c uh, it wasn't handled automatically at the standby database so we had to create the copy of a newly created PDB to standby database manually that was a manual process however uh, with the one init parameter you know we can automate creation of a PDB in the standby database even in this circumstance and that's what we're going to practice here so in our practice embodiment we're going to use a source database called ORCL it is running out of EM13C host your primary database location is host01 your standby database location is host02 uh, host03 so let's take a look at here so we have a prerequisite here the value of this parameter and we're going to use this parameter to automate the creation of a PDB in the standby database in the special case uh, this feature works only when standby database is configured in active data guard with a real-time query feature and also source PDB must be in read-only mode which means that ORCL database must be read-only mode while performing this kind of uh, this kind of a process so we're going to perform this task so step number one you're going to open new terminal window because we have an access to EM13 uh, other than step, uh, practice one so from gateway VM and you will SSH to EM13C host and then we will set environment variable and ORCL uppercase by default the EM13C has been set to use ORCL environment again ORCL is uppercase and we're going to log in as a sysdba and then we will check source PDB and this is something that we want to clone so from this PDB we will create new PDB in the primary database in order to perform um, the remote cloning you will have to create common user in the source database that way we can create database link so in this example we're going to create c pound pound remote underscore user I will use the same password okay so I prepared ORCL database to use database link from primary database to source database and I will grant enough privileges now we're gonna uh, use terminal window connected to host01 and then we're gonna create database link to source database if you haven't uh, configured your environment variable use ORA EMB with Boston in my environment I use existing terminal session so I don't have to so I will log in as a sysdba and then I will create uh, database link and this is a clone link connect to c pound pound remote underscore user identified by oracle underscore for you using orcl that's net service name using orcl net service name defined in the tns name entry 
and then we're going to connect to primary uh, source database using cPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPowerPower
for the newly created database. And I will execute this command. Create pluggable database. My newly created pluggable database name is a new underscore pdb1. Its source database is a pdb1 in ORCL database. So I will execute it. So we connected it to ORCL and then look for pdb1 data files and copy it over to host01. So pdb is ready now. The current status of a new, uh, PDB is mounted. That's the initial state of a newly created PDB. And you can open a new terminal window, not the existing one. Uh, it's because of you know uh, different purpose. So we're gonna connect to host 03, and we're gonna use a tail to review alert logo file. And you will see a couple of things here. So recovery, uh, new PDB1. You will see some aware. Successful creation. And also here, PDB1, PDB, look at this here. Recovery created a plug of a database, new PDB1. So what the minute in the physical standby database, I'm looking at alert logo file for London. In the physical standby database, new PDB automatically created by using DBLink. So internally, when the physical standby database detect missing data file, it uses database link to connect to source database and create copy of the data files. So that way, we, uh, we do apply service in the physical standby database, it can apply changes. So that's what you're gonna see from alert logo file. It worked perfectly. Now we're gonna return to ORCL database on EM13C. Finally, I can just open it because this uh, cloning process is done and we replicate it to physical standby database. So you can safely open it. And also, go back to Boston database. It was still mounted to state until a uh, new PDB instantiated in the physical standby database. You know, we kept newly created a PDB in the primary database in the mount state. So now we can open it. And then we're gonna query. Okay, so as you can see, now it's a read-write uh, read mode. So since we successfully instantiated the PDB at the physical standby database, we're going to reset any parameter that we, ha uh, we change it. And then we're going to actually uh, clean up a few things. So we'll reset any parameter at host 03. And then you will see in you know, our status at the physical standby database. Okay, so it is mounted, and it is you know uh, it um, no, it can be uh, it can protect the primary PDB database because the recovery status is enabled. 
Now, in order to clean up, we're going to close the uh, newly created PDB and then we're, we're going to drop it. So in the, or, uh, in the primary database, we're going to drop it because we no longer need this, uh, this pro uh, pluggable database. And then we're going to exit out. So uh, this practice is a little bit uh, you know, complicated because you have to know remote cloning uh, strategy and concept first. And also you have to know the cases where we have to create the copy of the data files manually in the physical standby database. One example is a transportable table space. Another example would be um, you forgot to set standby file management equals to auto. So your setting is a manual. Then even though you create one table space in the primary, the standby doesn't know about that. So you have to manually copy data file. And also, what if you create new pluggable database locally? There was a previous practice activity. What if you create new PDB from remote source? That's this practice activity. So there are cases where we have to consider the physical changes to primary database and also how to handle it in the physical standby database. And that's what we practiced here. So this is a practice 4-3.